Hi. Now in this part of the question, we're asked to define fully the cumulative distribution function f of x for this probability density function. Now in the first part of the question, we had to draw the probability density graph, which I've got here. And next part, we had to show that k was equal to this value here. So using these facts, how do we go about defining then this cumulative distribution function f of x? Now we should be familiar with what f of x is defined as. f of x, the cumulative distribution function, represents the probability of being less than a given value x. So this, as I say, is something that we should be familiar with. Now on that basis, when we've got our probability density function, like so, what we need to do is split this up into various sections. So I'm going to consider this first section here, where x is somewhere between 0 and 1. So I've just put this up here, that we're considering x being greater than or equal to 0, but less than 1. So effectively, we're looking at this section of the graph. Let's just draw part of it in. OK, we've got f of x here. And we know that at 0, x is equal to a half. And eventually, at 1, x is still a half. It's this constant value. This section here, then. Now, when x is somewhere between 0 to 1, let's say x is this point here, then this part of f of x, the probability when x is less than this observed value x, is given by this area here. And being a geometric shape, a rectangle, then we can simply write down that f of x must be equal to well, the area of that rectangle, which is just the height here, half, times the width here, x. So it's going to be a half x, or x over 2, if you like. OK? So that's for that first part. Now we've got to consider the next section. The section when our observed value is somewhere between 1 and k. So we'll just put that up here, that when x lies between 1, it's greater than or equal to 1, but less than our constant k. Let's also sketch our probability density function again for this part of the graph. We've got x, we've got f of x here. OK, it was a half, so we've got something like that. And then it goes upwards. Now, when we're looking at our value of x this time, it's somewhere, let's say, here. OK, it's greater than the value 1 that we've got at this point here. And it's less than the value of k that we had up here. So when it comes to working out f of x this time round, we're looking at essentially all the area. OK, so you've got to be very careful. All the area of going from 0 here, let's just put 0 there, 0 all the way up to x. So it's the blue area, and it's also this green area here. Well, we know that f of x then is going to be that area. So we need to work it out. So we know it's going to be all of this blue area, which is going to be a half. And then we've got to add to this the green area. Being a trapezium, it's going to be half the sum of the parallel sides. So it's going to be this height up here, which is going to be at a half. So we've got half of a half plus, and then we need this height up here. And we know that that is going to be given by x minus a half. Just substitute 
x into here, so it's going to be x minus a half. So we've got plus x minus a half. And then we multiply that by the distance between the parallel sides, which is going to be x minus 1. So I hope you can see that. I've written a bit small, but uh, there we go. And if we tidy this up, we've got the half here. And then inside the bracket, we're just left with the x, because these two halves cancel one another out. So we've got a half of x, or just plus x over 2, multiplied by x minus 1. Now I could either leave it like this, or I could pull out half as a common factor. And then if I take the bracket part first of all, I've got x times x, which is x squared. Then I've got x times minus 1, which is minus x. And then I've got this plus a half, so we could say plus 1. So now I've got all the ingredients I need to define fully the cumulative distribution function f of x. So we'll just write it here, f of x equals, and we'll just have a big section like this. Okay, now we start from the left, okay, and work our way to the right. Now I only considered the values of x between naught and k, but we've also got to take into account what f of x would be when x is less than zero. Now when x is less than zero, the probability of having a value less than zero is going to be zero. So it's going to be zero then when x is less than zero. Now we come into this section where x is between 0 and 1, and we found out that f of x was x over 2. So we'd have x over 2 for this section when x is between 0 and 1. Okay? Now we move on to the next section where x is between 1 and k and we did this here. And we saw that when that was the case, we ended up with a half of x squared minus x plus 1. And if I can just squeeze this in here, this is when x is greater than or equal to 1, but less than or equal to our constant value k. And finally, when x is beyond k, when x is greater than k, the probability of having any value less than it is guaranteed. Because we know that we've got values in this region. So it's guaranteed, so that probability then is going to be 1, if x is any value greater than or equal to k. Alright, so hope that gives you an idea of how we go about this part of the question.